Welcome to the Spring 2018 International Student Awards Ceremony. I'd like to invite you to come in and grab a seat and get started momentarily. My name is Matthew Jones. I'll be your master of ceremony for the evening. We'd like to welcome everyone. We know that there have been so many distant travels to get here, and, and we honor and appreciate you for coming all this way to support your loved ones. Tonight, we are here to honor, celebrate, and recognize the scholastic and extracurricular accomplishments that you have all made over the last one to five years. It's been a journey, and for some of you, longer than others, but as we've said from the beginning, this is, this is not a race, this is a marathon. And you've made it to the next step in your adventure, so we congratulate you on that. As we've been saying from the beginning on our first orientation day, no one working in international education or in higher education does this for the, the paycheck. Um, we do this because we love our students. We believe in the value and power of higher education. And we celebrate the fact that each and every one of you are one step closer to impacting, transforming, and completely restoring any lost hope in your current country, your economic system, your family, your friends, your community. You are the hope in the future of tomorrow, and we applaud you for your efforts making that next step. Tonight is an awards ceremony, so please do not forget to attend the graduation, where you can put on your cap and gown and walk across the stage to receive your certificate or degree as you prepare for your next adventure, whether that's university, a private school, returning to your home country, jumping into the workforce. Tonight, we have a wonderful event planned for all of us, including salutations and well wishes from Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs, Siri Brown, Director of International Education, Thomas Torsgill, and President of Berkeley City College, Dr. Rowena Tomine and get your tissues, cameras, and Facebook or Instagram live accounts ready for the powerful speeches we will be receiving tonight from our valedictorian and salutatorians. Like I said, we have a power-packed hour of honors, laughs, and tears as we celebrate this bittersweet occasion of saying goodbye, until next time, and congratulations. Without further introductions, I would like to invite our first honored speaker, President of Berkeley City College, Dr. Rowena Tomanang. So congratulations, class of 2018. <laughs> so I, I prepared some brief remarks um, on behalf of myself uh, Chancellor Laguerre, who um, was not able to make it um, today, and also um, my fellow presidents of Laney College, Dr. Tamil Gilkerson, Dr. Tim Karras, who is here from College of Alameda, and Dr. Malie, uh, Marie Elaine Burns of Merritt College. So on behalf of Berkeley City College and Chancellor Laguerre, I welcome you to our first international education celebration for our class of 2018 graduates and transfer students. I hope that your time at BCC and the rest of the Peralta colleges has forged new long lasting relationships with members of our community. Thank you for all of the contributions that many of you have given to Berkeley City College, Laney College of Alameda, and Merritt College. You have shared your cultures and values with your classmates, your teachers, and our staff. Many of you have given back to our communities by volunteering as tutors, serving as student ambassadors for our colleges, and taking leadership in student government 
and the many other clubs that we have across our four campuses. As you transfer to university, I know you will continue your education and grow in your experience and your skills. Please remember us and the community you have helped us build. As former American statesman Robert F. Kennedy once said, quote, it is not more bigness that should be our goal. We must attempt rather to bring people back to the warmth of community, to the worth of individual effort and responsibility, and of individuals working together as a community to better their lives, your future children and families, and the future of all our communities here in the United States and in your homelands. So with that, I would like to congratulate all of you again. We are so proud of you. Uh, remember us and enjoy the celebration today. Okay, next I would like to invite the Director of International Education, Thomas Torsgill. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good afternoon and welcome to our first annual International Graduation Award Ceremony. Um, I'm so glad that each and every one of you can make it here tonight. I know that we have asked for your time when you could be writing your essays, completing your projects, and studying for finals. Uh, we truly appreciate that you have accepted the invitation uh, to be here tonight so that we could honor and recognize your academic achievements. Your decision to study with us and in the Bay Area has hopefully challenged your notions and ideas about the U.S., your home country, and yourselves. Um, you might have heard the saying, you cannot judge a book by its cover. I hope that some of the speeches you hear tonight will continue to challenge your understanding of this world and what you may think of yourself or of others around you. You would never guess, if you didn't know me, that I was raised by a Mexican mother and an African-American stepfather. I have eight total siblings. Three older stepbrothers, all are black, a brother and a sister from my biological parents, and two younger half-sisters, half black and half Mexican. And the eighth, I also have an older half-sister from my father's first marriage, who recently reconnected with us after more than 30 years. Um, did I mention that one of my stepbrothers has moved to China, is a Chinese resident, and has started a small family? Um, I won't get into my uncles and aunts. We'd, we'd be here the rest of the night. Um, but coming from an atypical family, it's hard not to compare yourself uh, with others. It was hard for me that I did not know Spanish uh, growing up when so many of my friends did. So I made it a goal of mine to learn Spanish in order to be more connected to that side of my identity. And in January 2003, I got on a plane and left the U.S. for the first time in my life. I studied in Chile and didn't return for a year. And while my Spanish is much better, a year is not enough time to become fluent in another language, as many of you already know. Standing here tonight and looking at each of you, it is hard for me to imagine your circumstances that led to the decisions for you to leave your countries, come to the U.S., and not only decide to study for one year like I did, but in many cases earn a degree at a city college and for many of you to continue at a university where you will earn your bachelor's degree. For those that are continuing on with your education, you may feel different at times from that traditional university student, you know, that student you've seen in the movies or even here in the coffee shops around this, this college town. And you are different, uh, not only because you're a transfer student, but also because you are an international student. Um, but embrace these differences. I know everyone here tonight does. I love these differences. This is why I chose to find a career working with international students. For those entering the workforce in the U.S., back home, or even in another country, you may also feel different, but you may stand out for different reasons. You may be surrounded by those who have only dreamed of not just studying and living in a foreign country, but who didn't feel comfortable enough to go and do it. You, might, you may also find those who did and establish an instant connection with them, whether or not they've even been to your country. I've waited a long time for a night like this. If you had asked me a year ago if this event would be held, I don't know if I would have believed it. Having served our international students for a decade, I truly believe our focus should be on these events. We should take more time to recognize your hard works, efforts, uh, sacrifices, determination, and vision. Many of you we have met over the last number of years 
Um, some of you are so determined and independent that we may have only seen you in passing, only to sign an I-20, or just by email, and hopefully tonight. We hope that you have made lifelong friends, found your experiences to be life-changing, and that you continue to be successful however you define it and wherever your path takes you next. We are proud and honored to be the place you chose to study and wish you best of luck in all that you choose to do. Congratulations. Have fun. Next, I would like to introduce someone very near and dear to the hearts of those in the Office of International Education. This student has not only faithfully served as a peer advisor in the Office of International Education, but has also been the president of the IFISH Club on campus, as well as volunteering and ex being accepted to every prestigious institution from across the United States that she applied for. All the way from Columbia, your spring 2018 salutatorian. Let's give a well-deserved round of applause to Miss Anna Zen Moy. Hello, class of 2018. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate all of you. We made it. Uh, me gustaría también agradecer a la facultad, personal y estudiantes de Peralta que nos acompañan el día de hoy. Es un honor para mí estar y celebrar este logro con ustedes. I also like to thank Peralta staff, faculty, and students for accompanying us today. It is an honor for me to be standing here and celebrating this achievement. It feels like it wasn't that long ago when I was back in Colombia dreaming about studying abroad. And now, after two years of coming to California and transferring and graduating. My story, my identity, and my story are some of the reasons, are some of the reasons that makes me happy. I was born and grew up in Colombia as a daughter of two Chinese immigrants. My parents established our family in a neighborhood called Santa Fe. These tolerant zones in Bogota City surrounded of bars, brothels, nightclubs, and small businesses, along social problems such as prostitution, gun violence, and drug dealers, was the, Sorry. was the setting that shaped my childhood and teenage life. As a, as a child, I always wondered why my siblings and I always stood out. I constantly asked myself, what's wrong with my dual identity? Being born in Latin America, where Asians were really teen, seems to be part of the reason, but I seem to be in the spotlight. Growing up, I felt like I was in the middle of a minefield. I couldn't understand some of my parents' traditions, and at the same time, I couldn't feel related to my fellow Colombians. I did not feel Chinese, and neither did I know what it really meant to be Colombian. I felt how the doors to my identity were slammed upon my eyes, with the simplification of my race and physical appearance but never on my culture and how proud I am of being Colombian. Despite of this, I am happy of being an Asian Latina. I'm a proud first Chinese Colombian generation of my family to go to college. I am happy to speak Spanish, listen to Latina songs, and enjoy traditions, folklore, culture, and each bite of the amazing Colombian cuisine. Writing about, writing about my study became an embarkation of a dream to create a piece of work that encompasses the meaning behind the funny and abstract occurrences that many Asian Latinos face. On the grounds of, those, of these ideas, I would like to be part of the change that my community needs. I am a voice. I am a leader who contributes to others through small actions. And I believe that each of us can make a significant impact in the world. But it is action that makes this powerful. In order to address all the issues that we have been facing in our society, we must work from the inside to attack individual problems that affect each of us, starting by educating ourselves and becoming leaders who engage in actions. This and even more is what we are all capable of doing as individuals and part of our communities. We have the opportunity to study and to involve ourselves into different fields, and this is what encouraged me to further my education by transferring. When I transfer to a university, I will be able to learn and grow day by day. I will be able to improve my skills and learn about other cultures as a political scientist. Soon after, I will be able to apply what I have accomplished in a social, academic, and personal aspect to explore the world and surround myself with issues in regards to policy making, foreign affairs, diplomacy, and advocacy, while focusing in regions such as Latin America and East Asia. Like my parents who stepped outside of the country to learn Spanish and went up to the streets of Bogota City, we all left our comfort zones to be able to see another side of the world and to explore. All the social problems we see in our daily life have helped us to understand the issues that have turned people and countries apart. This influences us to be the change that our communities need. Many of the faces I see today will become amazing leaders and people in the future. In many cases of our lives, we doubt ourselves and think about our future 
Have you ever thought about what if I'm not good enough for this? What if I'm not smart? Why can't I accomplish or be at the same level as that person? What if this is not what I really want? What if I cannot do it? What if I won't be able to afford it? What if I don't get in? Will this be the best for me? Should I do it or not? We tend to look at all the flaws and bad sides in our life, but we forget about the countless opportunities we have missed. We are too afraid of taking some decisions because we fear failure. We are afraid of being the only international in that class. We are afraid of asking out that girl or guy that you like. We are afraid of failing and not accomplishing things the way we think are the best for us. But not getting into that dream university or doing the things that you told you will do once coming here to California doesn't mean you have let yourself down. Because the failure is when you no longer believe and lose hope in yourself. I thank my friends for all the sacrifice they have made by moving to Colombia and providing me all the opportunities I have today. I thank my international office family for teaching me a wide range of skills and for their support. I thank Matthew Jones for his guidance, advice, and motivation to become a leader. I thank my professor, Charlie Lee, who couldn't make it today, but for I am grateful for being a wonderful and amazing professor, for each of her engaging classes and lectures, and for inspiring me to study political science. I thank my friends for their unconditional support and for making my college experience in California one of the best. And I thank all of you for being here, for listening to me, and my last advice for you is to never be afraid of challenging yourself to try new things. You'll encounter many obstacles in your life, but never be afraid of anything. Be confident and believe in yourself. No matter what, be humble, and don't forget those who have helped you to be the person you are today. Once again, congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you. Our next honored guest is truly worthy of our praise. After earning three degrees and three certificates with a 4.0 GPA, participating in the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society as treasurer, volunteering with the Oakland Unified School District as treasurer, as a tutor, <laughs> and creating an Italian club with over 150 active members, it is an honor to introduce the Merit College and international class valedictorian from Italy, Alessandra Cimienti. Class of 2018, how are we feeling? Really? Yes, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? Come on! Woo! Yes! Most of us here today did what they thought was impossible and achieved what they thought was unachievable. If anyone would have told me that I was going to be the valedictorian today, I would have never believed it. Never. I am honored to be here because you will represent me. You are my community, and I feel like we share a lot of achievements and a lot of struggles. I think that we all come from different parts of the world, but I am sure that we all share something in common. We all left our families, our countries, our languages, and the people that we love. And we all came here to a completely new reality. We challenge ourselves, and we won. We did instead of wishing of doing. We achieved instead of dreaming of it. And this is amazing. There are three pieces of advice that I would like to give you today. Be proud, always. Be humble, always and don't never say that something is impossible. I'm going to tell you my story so that you understand what I mean. When I arrived here four years ago, I didn't speak a word of English. So I went through something that probably most of you went through. I was alone, couldn't understand anything, and mostly people couldn't understand me. So I was tough for a long time. Soon arrived the time for me to get my driving license. I already had a driving license from Italy, and I had a bachelor from Italy, so I never had trouble studying. And so I thought, well, how hard can this be? It was so hard, so incredibly hard. I took the test, and I failed, and I felt miserable. So I had this little piece of paper that says, you failed, and I brought it to the lady that was supposed to help me. She started talking, and she said, you know, she told me the how to, to reschedule the appointment, how to take another test. But she had a very strong American accent. She talked super fast. So I couldn't understand anything. So I asked her politely to repeat herself, this time slower so that I could understand her. Instead, she got very mad at me, and she started yelling 
but she spelled out the word so that I could understand her. And she said, you didn't pass the test, you clearly have a problem with English, and I think you should go back to your own country where people can understand you. Because here you are creating a long line of people waiting for you. You can imagine how I felt. I was broken, I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be horrible. I started crying, and I told her that I was so sorry. I went home, and I cried all night. And I even thought that maybe she was right, and I was supposed to go back home. Maybe this wasn't the right place for me. But here where my first piece of advice comes in. Always be proud of yourself. Don't let anybody tell you who you are, how you're supposed to be. If you have an accent, so what? If you don't know English, so what? You can learn. So the day after I woke up, even though my ego was in pieces, was just shattered, and my pride was so angry, I woke up and I told to myself that I would never let anybody else in my entire life treat me the way she did. And so I started to take English classes, very intense classes. I started to go out more. I closed myself in the house every night to what I believe that is the international student best friend, Netflix with subtitles. I'm pretty sure that you know about it. And I just learned, slowly, but I learned. And I decided to come to college, to apply to college because I wanted to improve my life. And I came here to Peralta. And as probably most of you, my first semester was just terrible, terrible. I was always the last one because all my classmates were American speakers and I always felt like I wasn't gonna fit in, I wasn't gonna be enough. But then I remembered the promise that I made to myself and I, I remembered that I told myself to be proud and I managed to achieve an A in every class I've gotten and I've dedicated every one of them to that lady at the DMV, yeah. <laughs> every one of them. And so this is why I feel that you have to be proud of yourself. You have to always believe in yourself because there is nobody that can tell you otherwise. Especially today, because this is our day. So we need to be proud of ourselves. We need to be happy and to celebrate of how far we've come and how much we've achieved. But here's my second piece of advice. Always be humble. No matter how far you've come, how much you achieved, don't ever forget that there are people that help you get there. So thank your families that supported you along the way. Thank your friend, like this crew over here, they came from Italy, from everywhere to support you. Thank the Peralta staff and administration and teachers. The teachers especially because they challenged you and they made you tough with all those cantrums and those finals and those midterms that you're not gonna miss <laughs> at all. And thank people like Matthew and like Na, because they have been there supporting you and hearing your complaining all along, all along, from the first semester until the last one, and all your fears, all your troubles. And mostly, thank people like Kanisha, because she understood the importance of graduation for international students, and she put this thing together for us. This is our first time having a graduation for international students. So thank Kanisha for that. And thank you, Kamisha. So again, be proud of yourself, be humble, and don't ever think that anything is impossible because the fact that I am here today, standing in front of you with this thick Italian accent is the proof that nothing is impossible, literally nothing. The fact that you are graduating here today, coming from all over the world with different stories, different backgrounds, different cultures is the proof that nothing is impossible and that if you want something, you, you can set your heart on it, you can achieve it. When I arrived here, I didn't know English, but today I'm graduating with three degrees, three certificates, valedictorian, 4.0, Phi Delta Kappa, anything, nothing is impossible, literally nothing is impossible. I am the proof of that and you are with me today. And if I go, go back to that day right now, in this exact moment, I will tell, I will remember these three values in my mind and I will tell her very humbly, I'll be, okay, I am really sorry for creating the line because I truly was, but I will be also a little bit proud and I will tell her, excuse me, I speak three languages. How many do you speak? <laughs> so, congratulations everybody. 
Our next guest is a passionate advocate for international education, education abroad, and a friend of the Office of International Education. Please welcome Dr. Siri Brown. All right, class of 2018, how are you feeling? It's too quiet up in here, I don't like it. You're supposed to be excited. Congratulations to you for all of the hard work, the accomplishments, the completion of this journey. And I really wanna thank the Office of International Affairs um, and to Kamisha for leading this first annual International Affairs graduation. I think it's a really important um, addition to the program to honor the fact that you all are now graduating and transferring and doing all kinds of wonderful things in your next path. So I'm happy to be here to speak uh, just for a few moments. Um, each of you has a story to tell about why and how and what your experience has been here in Peralta. You've demonstrated a tenacity, commitment, focus, and brilliance that has led you to this moment of celebration and success. I, when I was an undergraduate uh, a long time ago, ooh gosh, but I remember it so well because I studied abroad in college, and so I have a really small idea of what your experience was like uh, to live in another country, to not necessarily know the language, to uh, immerse yourself in another culture. But when I studied abroad, it was just short term. And so you all have really immersed yourselves here for one year, two years, um, three years or more. Um, and that says so much about you, about your character, about your values. You've immersed yourself into the East Bay of Oakland. Um, and have, af after having living here for so many years, you've had an in-depth experience of what it means to be a citizen of the world. Your graduation today is not just about the degree you obtained, but an acknowledgement of values and identity as a global citizen. Global citizenship is not a new concept. According to European history, a Greek philosopher, Diogenes of Sinope, around 412 BC, who's also called Diogenes of Cynic, was a philosopher and the first to utter a similar concept. He was, um, he was a philosopher of cynicism, which is a great path to study, and was the first to utter um, this kind of concept. Um, he rejected social values and conventions and, and believed in a simple lifestyle. The artificial growth of society was incompatible with happiness. Reportedly, he wrote 10 books, um, and when he was asked where he was from, he answered, I am a citizen of the world. No nation, state, or borders served as his definition of self he belonged to the world. National citizenship is an accident of birth, but global citizenship is different. It is a worldview one comes to develop and chooses to deepen. Global citizenship is, is a choice and a way of thinking. Han Schadl, who studies the impact of study abroad on identity, says that global citizenship signifies ways of thinking and living within multiple cross-cutting communities cities, regions, states, nations, and international collectives. People come to consider themselves as global citizens through different formative life experiences and have different interpretations of what it means to them. The practice of global citizenship is, for most, exercised primarily at home through engagement in global issues or with different cultures in a local setting. Only 35% of US citizens hold passports. Many cannot afford to travel internationally or don't have the mindset to do so. I remember talking to a person, I, di I didn't know the person, but talking um, in a grocery store, Safeway, in line, about travel for some reason and vacations, and she was saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm about to go abroad for my first time. And I said, oh, well, that's wonderful, where are you going? And she said, Hawaii. <laughs> so I didn't wanna correct her, because as a long-term faculty, you know, teacher, we're always correcting people and teaching, so I just said, Okay, well make sure you get your passport. Because I figured, <laughs> I figured that if she thinks she's going to another country, um, go ahead and at least she'll have her passport and then she might travel more and expand her geographical knowledge. Um, for others though, global citizenship means first-hand experience with different countries, peoples and cultures, like students, yourselves, who choose to study abroad, who take the risks, experience the joy, and learn every moment of that experience. The student who goes abroad is not only learning language or textbook material, but something much deeper and profound. Ideas about self, about nation, about identity, and the connectedness of the human experience. 
That is only if they choose to deepen their commitment to becoming a global citizen. Remember, it is a worldview, a mindset. One can travel abroad numerous times and still not be a global citizen. The best example is President number 45, Donald Trump, who travels extensively but experiences a deep xenophobia, Islamophobia, and a closed racialized sense of nationalism. Trump is not a global citizen. His message of hate and intolerance has done so much damage and even led to a sharp, sharp decline in the number of applications for F1 visas um, to come to study in the United States, decreasing the number of international students nationwide and thus negatively impacting those students' options as well as our own classroom experience that is advantaged when we have students that are from other countries. Global citizen is, citizenship is not about travel, it's about values and ethics. Psychologists use a tool developed in 2005 called the World Values Survey. And in it, they ask thousands of people from, around, uh, from, ar from over 100 countries to respond to the following statements. I see myself as a world citizen. Or I feel a sense of connection to people all over the world. They asked these in relation to other questions about values. And they found strong correlations with those who identify as global citizens. Those who identify in this way have um, more empathy, more caring, more openness to new experiences. They see the connectedness between ideas and concepts better. They see the connection between local and global issues and are more politically aware on the human level of global um, global politics and the impact of U.S. foreign policy, for example. Global citizenship is, not, citizenship is not about travel, it's about values and ethics. The staff and administration in international affairs, as you know, are strong global citizens. And in their actions, work, and beliefs, I see such strong de uh, demonstration of how we all ought to be. They care so much about the students, and I know that you know that. They work above and beyond to connect students to each other, to the staff, to make you feel like you belong, to help you have a sense of family and community when your family and community is so far away. They respond to and take care of our students. So I urge you to take this experience, what you've had here at Merritt College and Berkeley City College and Laney College and College of Alameda, not just for the degree, but for the depth of the experience that you've had, not just learning in the classroom, but learning every single minute of the day about what nation means, what state means, what identity is, what self is, who you are as a citizen of the world. I urge you to continue on that path as you transfer and go on for your BAs, your master's degrees, your doctorates. Um, and as you do so, please remember the role that Peralta played in your experience, the role that international affairs played in your experience the role that each of you played into the experience of each other. And take this with pride, um, and congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. So next is the moment you've all been waiting for, our awards ceremony. So we're going to have you stand up in rows. We're going to first, excuse the first row to stand up and stand in line here. We're first from Berkeley City College, Salutatorian, Anna Zen Moy. And next, your valedictorian from Merritt College, Alessandra Kimienti. From Berkeley City College, Byomjin Kim. And from Berkeley City College, Andres Feng Situ. From Merritt College, Unji Kim. From Merritt College, Yu Fei Li. From Berkeley City College, Maria Antonia Cambreri. From Berkeley City College, 
Shubnit Kaur. From the College of Alameda, Kwong Din. And from Berkeley City College, Eunice Poon. All right, congratulations. <laughs> so we're here tonight to celebrate incredible accomplishments. And none of us, whether students in the room, parents, spouses, administrators, none of us would be here on our own. None of us got to the place where we're at today on our own accord. Every one of you had someone in your corner, rooting for you, praying for you, following up with you, making sure you're doing your homework and brushing your teeth and all of your assignments and everything. We have parents to thank. We have counselors to thank. You have yourselves to thank, your teachers to thank. And what I want to do is take a minute to just think about who those people are in your life. How did you get here today? And on the count of three, what I want you to do is celebrate those people and celebrate yourselves for the accomplishments that you have achieved and that they have helped you achieve. No matter who it is or where they are in the world today, on the count of three, let's give them and ourselves a round of applause. One, two, three. Yeah. Well deserved. This event would not have happened with two beautiful individuals that we have the pleasure and blessing of working with. Um, the first being Miss Haran Yoon. Would you please come up to the stage, Miss Haran Yoon? Please come on up. And the person who birthed this event, blood, sweat, and tears, all of it, we thank you, Miss Kamisha James. Now the award ceremony may be over, but the reception is just around the corner. So if you guys want to get up from your chairs, we have a wonderful reception for you. We have some incredible food and beverages for you and some great music. And it sounds like Miss James would like to say something. Please, Miss <laughs> James. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, before everyone leaves, I want you guys to have a wonderful time. There's lots of great food like you just mentioned, but for all the graduates, we would love to get a, a nice group photo with all the staff and the graduates before you leave. Up Please, here up here on the stage. So don't go out yet. Please, now. It's okay, don't be shy. Come closer. 